yeah, there are other comics, but Watchmen's basically the only comic worth reading. Cool. Cool. Uh, don't love that you have that opinion, but cool. Um, go ahead and explain the ending for me. Uh... Hello everyone, and welcome back to Under Caffeinated Man Struggles for 5-10 to 10 minutes. If it's your first time here, we generally just run through the number one issues and any other significant issues I can think of, along with any trades that I have on the shelf that might be of interest. I've got quite a lot to talk about this week, so let's just dive right in. Starting off with Marvel, you know what time it is. Captain America Sentinel of Liberty number one. So following on from Sam's series, Symbol of Truth, we have Captain America Sentinel of Liberty, which focuses on your boy Steve. This writing pair, Kelly and Lanzig, have actually been doing quite a lot recently. I think either one or both of them is doing the new Batman Beyond series, and that's turned out pretty good. So yeah, this is definitely worth a pick up. Hulkling and Wiccan one-shot. We tend to just catch up with these two characters in one-shots at the minute. I'm guessing that's because Young Avengers don't have their own title for some reason. But the last few have been pretty good, so I have no reason to believe that this one would be any different. Moon Knight Black, White and Blood number two. I'm still waiting for him to fight Dracula in one of these issues. Black, White and Blood as a concept has been amazing so far, and the first issue of this was just so, so blindingly good. I'm so excited to get home and read this. Like, I'm so ready to just go home and read this now. New Fantastic Four Marvel Tales. I'm guessing this is setting up the New Fantastic Four, New New Fantastic Four, New New Fantastic Four series that's starting up. It's just reprints of a few older issues where you see the team for the first time. It's an interesting lineup. I have no reason to believe it wouldn't be any good. Amazing Spider-Man number one, second printing. I have now sold out of first printings twice, so you're definitely going to want to get your hands on a second one if you missed out. Ben Riley Spider-Man number five, this is the last part of the series. I've very much enjoyed seeing my boy Ben back in the threads. Even though we kind of got that from Spider-Man Beyond, I'm still salty about the ending of that. So it was just nice to see him in the 90s doing his Spider-Man thing. Our one title from DC this week, Jurassic League number two. I love the idea of this concept. It's so bizarre, but so good. It feels like a title that only Daniel Warren Johnson could write. There's no reason that anyone else would attempt this. Aftershock now, Bunny Mask, Hollow Inside, number two. If you picked up number one, number two is out. If you picked up the first series, we still have number ones, so you can get both. I've heard nothing but good things about this series, so it's well worth your time. Kicking off into Image, Cyberforce 30th Anniversary Edition, number one. It is literally a reprint of Cyberforce number one. If you've been interested in reading that, or just want to own a little piece of history, this is here for you. Oh my god, I've been so excited about this book. Do a Powerbomb, number one. So, speaking already of Daniel Warren Johnson, this is this is him and his prime, man. These ridiculous books like Murder Falcon and Beta Ray Bill, they fuel me. <laughs> and this book is just so ridiculous in concept, but so, so well executed. I just love this man. <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to be one of the best titles coming out, even though it's about wrestling. So do yourself a favour and pick it up now. Seven Sons, number one. Marks J. Lee's return to create her own comics. I haven't seen J. Lee do much but covers in the last few years, so it's quite nice to see him back on interiors, even though it's only going to be seven issues, but uh, of course it was. It's called Seven. Skybound presents After School, number one. This is going to be an anthology book, similar to the Black, White and Blood series. It's going to be four issues, and it's going to be different creators on it each time. This first issue has Greg Hinkle on it, and uh, I'll always recommend Airboy to people. Over 18. Undiscovered Country... Destiny Man one shot. So this is separate from the rest of the series, although it's not, it's still about the same thing, but it is a one shot that ties into the series, not another issue. Just a quick thing as well, we do have several image firsts in stock. So the full list of what we've got is Astro City, Department of Truth, East of West, Kill or Be Killed, Nocterra, The Ever Reliable Spawn, and the Wicked and Divine. So if you are looking to get into any of these image series, but you're not quite sure whether you'd enjoy it, pick up some of these for 90p each and have a look. You never know. For graphic novels this week, I'm going to start off strong. Iron Fist, Heart of the Dragon. So I've just managed to restock on this book, and if you've been reading the new Iron Fist miniseries and you've been like, wait, that's not Danny Rand, this book explains why Danny has no powers anymore. It's written by Larry Hammer. There's definitely a very retro vibe to it while at the same time still keeping the pace and interest of modern comics. Cannot recommend this highly enough. Symbiote Spider-Man. This is set back during when Peter had the symbiote. It's not an alternate reality thing. 
So it's set back during, I guess it would have been the 80s at the time. Mysterio's considering quitting the villain business, and then Spider-Man does what he does and messes everything up, so he's like, yeah, nah, I'm back. <laughs> very, very much worth a read. Author Peter David is, he's never a letdown. I don't think I've ever read a single bad thing by him. This has spawned a few sequels as well, which are just as good. So I've had a few people ask me now, like, where is Jane Foster? Like, she was Thor for a while, and now she's not. Where is she? Well, here she is. Jane's currently serving as the Asgardian equivalent of an angel, a Valkyrie. She's recently facilitated their return, as you can see here. It is a King in Black tie-in, so if you've read King in Black, you're going to get a little bit more enjoyment out of this. But this is well worth reading as just a standalone Jane Foster story as well. I'm definitely about to get shouted at here. As much as I didn't really enjoy the rest of Bendis' Superman, the first volume of Action Comics was actually pretty good. I quite enjoyed the new character, Red Mist, that they introduced. I quite enjoyed the idea of there being this underground figure controlling most of Metropolis. It had a lot of promise. I'm not going to comment on where that led, but it had a lot of promise when it first started out. I know this isn't new, but I have been waiting so long to get Many Deaths of Layla Star in. This is an absolutely fantastic book and scratches the Sandman itch for people who have already read all of it and just don't know where to go from now. Another boom title that just surpasses all expectations. We have plenty in stock, so come get it. From Image, out this week, the first volume of Bone Orchard. Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino, with their free comic book day issue, kind of vaguely previewed what's coming in Bone Orchard. It looks to be creepy, it looks to be very stylistic, it looks to be kind of great, to be honest. I don't know what else we expect from Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino anymore, but this looks like it's amazing. I am, once again, very excited to get home and read this. Speaking of Lemire and Sorrentino, we also have stock of Primordial now. These hardcovers are gorgeous. I mean, oh man. The story about the animals that have been sent to space is just, wow, you could call it out of this world. <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fire myself for that one, I think. That's all from me this week. If you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next week. So following on from Sam's solo series, Symbol of Truth, we have Captain America's Symbol... So following on with... <laughs>